Hi, my name is Leslie Graff. I'm a visual artist who's been living and working here in Sutton, Massachusetts for the last 19 years. My journey to become a professional artist is probably different from most people. I kind of consider myself an accidental artist, um, or this is sort of an accidental career. For me, I always enjoyed painting and drawing growing up, but at the end of high school, I decided to pursue some of my other academic interests and went on to get a degree in education and a graduate degree in marriage, family, and human development. So I was teaching and working in college and university settings, teaching child development and family relationships, and working as child life specialist in clinical settings doing psychological preparation and therapeutic play with children and adolescents. I decided to step away from my career to spend a little more time at home after the birth of my first son. And during this time, I sort of got my paints from high school back out and decided to make some art to go on our walls. So at this time, a woman came to my house and she asked if she could buy one of my works. It sort of surprised me because I had never really thought of selling art. And then she said, well, actually, I have a shop. Would you do a show? And I decided to do that more as just sort of a personal project and to sort of get back into this hobby that I had sort of backburnered for a few years. And as it turned out, I ended up selling most of the show and it was at this sort of transitional time in my life when I had, had my first son and then over the period of three years I had seven miscarriages. So it sort of created this interesting space where my life was very disrupted and creating art sort of came in at this time and filled sort of an important need for me in terms of making meaning or having an outlet of expression in my life. I'm probably most known for my domestic series which depicts women in the home doing domestic work. This series came about when one day I was wearing an apron that my great-grandmother had embroidered and I was sweeping my kitchen and I thought, wait, I bet my great-grandmother did this exact same task wearing this apron at some point. Only for me, this is the 2000s and for her it was the 1940s. And I thought about our lives and our experiences and how things were different for women in those two places and times. And I thought the idea sort of came to me for this series of exploring that, exploring this sort of changing context and experience for women, both in terms of cultural expectations, their identities, and what that meant. What's unique about this series is that the figures are always cropped. So it's probably somewhere between portraiture and figurative work. And it's actually what I consider a self-portrait series, as I was early on trying to decide which direction the series would go, who I would use as models, what I would depict. I sort of returned to feminist framework, which really taught us to, to speak from first person and to use our own context and experiences. So I thought that's what I can speak from is my experience. And I like the authenticity and the intimacy of using my clothes and my home and my furniture and these objects that have significance for me. So in the pieces, I sort of mix in domestic artifacts, objects from different periods of time to sort of blur the historical context which again sort of invites the viewer to ask questions. How is this experience different based on these different periods of time? One thing that's also notable about the works is the women tend to be dressed up. And people have different responses to this. I have women who say, this reminds me of my mother or my grandmother. Or they may say, no, this feels like me today because I go to work and I come home and I'm doing sort of the second shift but I'm still dressed for work. And I have other women who say, wait, I never look like this when I'm doing chores at home, but I like that it sort of gives a different importance or significance to something that I consider very mundane. Through this deliberate decision to crop the figures, we don't see the face of the woman. And this is what we usually use to read her thoughts and emotions. Instead, we can only read through her body language. And people can make whatever judgments they want about the figure, but the woman retains the power over her thoughts and her emotions. I think there's an incredible intimacy to the mind, and I like that it gives the woman that control. And it allows other people to make judgments or decisions, but she has the ultimate power within herself. Uh, the pieces have sort of a relationship to lifestyle periodical illustrations of sort of the 1950s and 60s. I really feel a connection to those artists in terms of the way that they used discrete color, their compositions, the sort of tensions between fantasy and reality, 
and these interesting sort of dynamics, especially for women, and relationships. For the Worcester Art Museum, I chose to have a diptych sort of that are hung above each other horizontally. And I liked pairing a female figure with a male figure. This is a little bit different than my normal work, but I like this sort of contrast. The contrast of their experiences. For example, how is the woman's experience different from the man's experience? What is she thinking? What is she feeling? I love that they each are in their own spaces. It sort of explores to connection as it relates to um, the mind. It doesn't necessarily relate to physical presence and I like exploring that. One thing I really love is in the female piece she's holding a magazine, a mid-century magazine, and it features an illustration by Kobe Whitmore, who is a well-known mid-century illustrator, and the title of the article that it was paired with is called A Nice Girl from Boston, and it was just fitting for the setting and the exhibit space to have something that was significant to Massachusetts. The way that the domestic series is created is that I typically have an idea that I'm playing with. Sometimes it revolves around a word or an object or sort of a relationship, a spatial relationship I see in my mind. It sort of plays out in some little scribbly thumbnails in my sketchbook. And then I move into a photo shoot where I actually sort of get dressed up in the clothes, work within the physical space, take probably a couple hundred pictures, and then d define really where I want to go with the piece. I look at the different things that are communicated through the body positioning, through the relationships of the objects, and sort of select which I want to use as a base reference image for my work, which is not unlike the way many lifestyle periodical illustrators worked in the 1950s and 60s. From there, I sort of translate that into paint, but a really important piece for me is the titling of the work. I like the way that language can allow us to work in multiple levels at the same time, both in literal and more metaphorical or conceptual levels. For example, she wanted to get out, can talk about exactly what you want to do, but it also talks about sort of constraint or experiences that we might want to get away from. Stirring things up quite literally is something you're doing in the kitchen, but it also relates to how we use our power or for example, I use phones a lot because I like this play of sort of connection, control, power. There are a lot of levels of meaning within the language specifically of the pieces. So for me, the titling process is really important in sort of opening up questions or discussion around the various meanings of the piece.